Over a hundred journalists, print and television editors and reporters from around South Asia attended the fifth journalist summit, which took place the day before the official opening of the 16th Sark summit. The Prime Minister's speech at this event resonated with everyone present, regardless of which country they came from, as it highlighted the link between good governance, democracy and the right to information, issues of great relevance for the region as a whole. In our final report today, we bring you glimpses of a discussion forum on a topic that has become all too familiar for us in Sri Lanka, reconciliation and development. As the country's reconstruction and rehabilitation process gains momentum, we are faced with the challenge of ensuring that all communities feel that their concerns and needs are included in the plans. When we say reconciliation, we mean the restoring of ruptured relationships. Um, and it's interesting that we are talking about the concept of reconciliation because it's not recognized by everybody or there isn't necessarily common agreement that there are ruptured relationships to be restored uh, because that really becomes the starting point of asking, you know, talking about reconciliation. But uh, it's good to, if there are ruptured relationships to be restored, uh, we have to ask what nature of relationships are we talking about? We hear the word nation building uh, used quite a lot. Uh, and there's a question of Sri Lanka as a nation. Is it one nation? Is it two nations? We'll come back Dr. Nishan Demel feels that understanding reconciliation is the first step in an important Amanda process. In his presentation as the main speaker at the Flict Forum on the key challenges of post-war reconciliation and development, Dr. Demel reminded the audience of the post-independence challenge the country faced in building a sense of nationhood in a society with multiple identities. Sri Lanka faced a challenge. How do you build a sense of common identity amongst the people that are distributed in the geography of this island we call Sri Lanka? How do you build a sense of nationhood, a sense of solidarity, a sense of affinity, a sense of willingness to be part of each other's futures, to share each other's vulnerabilities, to celebrate each other's success? Um, there, there, there was a real challenge to build the sense of nation and solidarity and the, the response to that challenge wasn't very successful. Uh, and that's clear, the, the post-independence history says that we didn't resolve that challenge successfully. The introduction of new language laws in the 1950s is seen as a major contributor to the government's failure to unite the country. Dr. Demel went on to pinpoint how the crisis in language directly led to a breakdown of identity for the Tamil people, who, due to the government's unfair language laws, no longer felt like a viable community with equal rights. It was this question of identity that Dr. Demel felt should be addressed alongside the reconciliation process. For the public service, correspondence, and so on. We feel that that is the fairest way in which the problem could have been settled. The tension is not always language-based. Uh, it is identity-based, nevertheless. Uh, and if you are thinking about the challenge for reconciliation, I would say there are challenges, there are challenges for rec reconciliation along these three axes. Uh, between two types of singular nations, uh, between the institutions of the state and the Tamil people, uh, and between communities of Muslim uh, Singhala and Tamil. Can there be only one nation? Uh, or can I be a part of only one nation? Can I be a part of only one community? Uh, or is identity basically a singular thing? Uh, do I have one identity as a person? Or uh, is it possible to have plural identities, plural affinities. Making the link between reconciliation and development, Dr. Demel warned of the dangers of implementing development projects without taking into consideration the larger issues of democracy and people's participation. A timely reminder for the government as it embarks on a vigorous post-war development program for the country. Development, actually, there's a danger of using development as a mechanism of coercion, of rewarding those who cooperate uh, with capital expenditure, with roads, with infrastructure. 
uh, and punishing those who don't cooperate uh, by bleeding them dry of those things. And so you can get people cynically casting votes for, for policies and administrations that they don't like because they don't want to be punished. Uh, uh, and so there's a real danger uh, if you don't leverage democracy in the challenge of development, that development can become an instrument of coercion that undermines the task of reconciliation. Democratic space means a space that is consent to govern or make decisions uh, for the state on the basis of consent and persuasion rather than coercion. Sri Lanka stands at a significant juncture today. With the war being won and a brand new government in place, the stage is set for politicians to prove themselves and take the country forward towards greater stability, development and peace. Sandhani vidyata api merata janatata pratijnyamak denwa e obatabu viswasya e viswasya da ujita gauravekin api siludha nama ekamatikava kondesi virahitava araksha karnoa ikla kena pratijnyamak api mea astavila badeno bohumat misuti. But these efforts need to actively involve the people who will benefit from them. If the reconciliation process is not democratic, the window of opportunity to meaningfully bring communities together may in fact once again be missed. That's all we have time for today. But as always, if you have any comments or suggestions, please write in and let us know. Until next week, thanks for watching Noah's Zone.